Hey guys, welcome back to Millennial Money Honey. It's Katie here and we are officially putting a close to 2022 with all of my final year end numbers, everything I spent, earned, and saved slash invested for the year, as well as my savings rate, my progress to financial independence in early retirement, and just going through a highlight of all of my money numbers. So I'm super excited to walk you through everything and really dive deep into the numbers and see how I'm tracking towards becoming financially independent. If you're new here, FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. I am on track to become financially independent by 2020. 25. So that is in just a few years. My goal is $1.5 million, although I will become financially independent at with a total of $1 million. Uh, the extra 500000 is just sort of a buffer for if I decide to have kids as well. Um, so I'm excited to walk you through these numbers. And if you're new here, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when my next video drops. And let's talk money, honey. Okay, so starting with my expenses for house and bills slash utilities, I spent $0. If you guys didn't already see my December money video, that is going to drastically change in 2023. I am moving it officially in with my boyfriend. So we have yet to determine how much exactly I'm going to pay per month, but that is on the radar with helping with the housing costs of that. So stay tuned for how all that breaks down and the kind of money conversations that I'll be having with my significant other. And I think that'll be really interesting to document and show. Transportation, I spent $387. Those are things like Uber, Lyft, et cetera. Groceries, I spent $2,312. I think that will also increase as a result of living with my partner. I'm just going through the totals. Um, you can also see the average per month. So you'll see like for groceries, I spent an average of $193. That is obviously very low for the average person to only spend $2,000 on groceries for the entire year. So food, I spent $5,211. I would say that's kind of high per month, but I really, really enjoy eating out. It is an experience I totally value um, and think it's very worthwhile to spend on. I spent $681. Didn't go out that much. I thankfully spend less and less. I am so curious to know how much I would have been spending on drinks if you had looked at this, you know, prior to 2019 and like in my early 20s. I think that would have been a wild number. I mean, easy. You just spend like $100 a night and now it's down to like $600 for the entire year. That's insane to me. Recreation, $1,078. Travel, $3,413. I lived for basically two months out of my suitcase this year, so I don't think this really accurately captures my full travel spend because that was like a lot of eating out. So I put that under food. Travel was more like the travel expenses of like anytime I, I bought food like in an airport or paid for um, flights, hotel, things like that. That was all included in here, but there's also so much more that I of spending, like recreational spending I did while traveling that I don't think is reflected just in this travel category. Car, I spent $3,279. Shopping, $3,968. An average of $331 per month. That is pretty good. Um, my spent with intent goal was to spend about $300 mindfully each month. So I guess that kind of counts. Although I wouldn't say it's all very mindful. I don't know if my thrifting has become a little out of hand and less intentional. Um, so I'm really trying to reel that in, in 2023. Gifts. I spent 4,174. That makes me really happy knowing that like I still gift a lot and I'm generous with my money to give to other people or things that I give towards other people. Because like at the end of the day, I want to not be so miserly. I really want to be more generous, I think, with my money. And I think this category, I, I think I can even improve on for the next year. Work, I spent $11,852. And I will caveat by saying a lot, like $7,000 of this accounts for the taxes that I paid for my 2021 income for all the freelance work that I did last year. So it's kind of a weird category that really skews a lot of the data and you'll see that reflected later on. That would is probably my highest category, but if you took um, taxes out of that and put like taxes in its own bracket, the work would be closer to like $4,000. Health. 
um, $1,662. I do want to actually spend more on my health, like mental health and wellness this year. I do put like laser and any massages, facials, etc., haircuts under health, but I want to spend more on like mental health and maybe therapy in 2023. I've never had a therapist, but I think everybody could probably use a therapist. And I feel like maybe I'm at a point in my life in which I maybe need that. Miscellaneous, $404. Moving into income, my paycheck was $72,493. Um, that is like my W-2 income. I definitely earned over $100,000, but I think a lot of my paycheck I'm not even seeing and not really counting because it's in my like savings and investing portion, like my 401k and my HSA. So it's a little bit less, but I actually think this will increase next year. If you watch my December money video, you also see that I got a raise. My current salary is at $155,000. So it should hopefully be above the $100,000, even with maxing out my 401k and my HSA for next year. Resale, I resold $1,216 worth of stuff. I tried to keep my shopping and my reselling about the same, but you can see the resale, I didn't even resell half of the things that I bought. Sold $1,200 in items and spent close to 4,000 shopping. So I really do want to do a better job of that in 2023, but I'm very low effort with my resale stuff, but I definitely can resell more things. I decluttered some of my closet. If you saw any of my attempt at Vlogmas, I like was decluttering my closet half the time, but I am planning on reselling a lot of those clothes that I decluttered and I will continue doing my declutter very soon and then reselling and listing all the items. Freelance, I earned 55,000 and $80. As you can see, my paycheck was 72,000. My freelance work was $55,000 this year. So I did make quite a bit and that means I'm going to owe a lot in taxes. That is about $13,000 that I am going to owe approximately in taxes, maybe a little bit less because I can put some in my um, SEP IRA. But yeah, Oh, that's going to be a big tax bill. And I'm going to try and do my taxes super early this year because I somebody filed for taxes on my behalf and scammed the IRS for my tax money. Um, even though I owed, they like put input numbers so that they could get a return probably. And it was easy. And it's just like a white collar crime that people don't chase down. So I'm filing ASAP so I don't have to deal with that nightmare again. And if you didn't already file for an IRS pin, be sure to do that because that just gives you an extra layer of protection in case scammers try to file using your social security number. Cash back, I earned $2,000. $554. Interest, I earned $326 in my high yield savings account. Interest rates on high yield savings account are like 3.3% or greater. So be sure to save all your emergency money in a high yield savings account. I use Wealthfront. They're great. Amazing. I'll leave a link to the account I use, but there are no excuses. It takes like 10 minutes to open. Dividends, $4,984, almost $5,000 in total just for dividends. Out of everything, the most passive income I have between interest and dividends, that's essentially $5,200 that I basically did nothing to get. And I just got it. Millennial Money Honey earned $2,980. I definitely did not make that much money off of this like brand or my creative endeavors here. Again, as I mentioned in my last video, I've been feeling really lost. So I don't really have any goals or plans with that for 2023. I mean, if I make as much as I did last year for that, like I'll... I'd be happy. Maybe I'll try and make a goal of doing like $10,000, but that would also require me like reaching out to brands or something like that. So I don't really know what the solution is there. I don't know how to <laughs> quite monetize all this like effort that I put into here because, but maybe that's okay because it's just a hobby and I want it to be fun, not work. Work is work. In affiliate money, I earn $830. So I guess you could kind of tie that into like millennial money honey stuff because it's sort of adjacent to it but I keep it separate um and then in other I earned 971 dollars for savings uncategorized so kind of just my like checking account money I had a total of 18,140 dollars savings 24,300 dollars my IRA, I maxed that out for 2022 with $6,000. And in my SEP IRA, my CPA had me put $2,275 based on the amount that I earned last year on my freelance work. So that will probably increase in 2023. 
my contributions there. HSA, $2,433 in my 401k. I put in $22,645. And while that is higher than the limit, $20,500, my employer gives some matching based on my paycheck. That's why it's a little bit higher than the amount you're allowed to put in. Brokerage, I put in $58,500 into my brokerage account. That's an amazing number. Bonds, I put in another $5,000. I maybe should have put in more, but while the interest rates were high, but there are like more stipulations to putting and buying I bonds than there is to like just putting in a high yield savings account. So it's kind of tomato, tomato here. So that was all of my spending, earnings, and savings slash investments for 2022. So for the total and expenses, I spent $38,421, averaging $3,202 per month. If you take out taxes, it'd be closer to like $30,000, but I just didn't know how to kind of count account for that in my finances, but I needed to capture that. So it's a little weird. Income $141,434 for a monthly average of $11,786. Unless I somehow make a lot of money on Millennial Money Honey, I think this will actually go down for next year um, because I did a bit of freelance work on the beginning half of the year and I will not be doing any freelance work this year. So. I think it might go down unless my earnings from millennial money, honey, increase savings, $103,013 for a monthly average of $8,584 per month and a grand total savings rate of 73%. And I kind of touched on this on my Instagram. Uh, If you don't already follow me there, I'm over on Instagram at millennial money, honey. But as you can see here, my goal for 2022 was 85%, but my average was 73% with the highest savings rate being in January at 98%. I lived at home. I literally did nothing. I was just kind of vegging out from the holidays and my lowest month being negative 35% because I paid all of my 2021 taxes in September because... I late filed due to the little snafu of somebody who scammed the IRS and filed my tax return using my social. So um, that kind of skewed everything a bit. And even though I did not achieve my goal, I'm still on track according to um, Mr. Money Mustache's little savings rate chart to retire by 2025. My average savings rate for the last three years has been 77%. So given that, I will still be on track to become financially independent by 2025. I'm very happy with that amount. And honestly, I'm easing off the brakes. I am focusing less on like saving, saving, saving and being frugal. I'm trying to enjoy like living. I just read this book, Die With Zero. And it's definitely for a person who's kind of in the financial place that I am like a positive net worth um, is fortunate to have a very solid job, steady income. Um, So if you're kind of like in a similar situation, I definitely recommend reading that and just hearing his philosophy about how you should spend more while you're younger and healthy and able to enjoy the enjoyment of your dollar will go a bit further because you're just able to go do things. You're able to climb mountains, maybe not super luxuriously, but see more places and get more life experience as a result of that because you don't have like back aches and stuff and chronic pain, Um, even though I actually have chronic back pain now, so I'm already getting old. So I'm just trying to keep that in mind that like money is also meant to be spent while also still absolutely working towards my goal of becoming financially independent. Tangent. This is my net income from 2022. I'm not going to like go on this like month by month, but you can just see like overall from 2021 to 2022, I've continued the average per month of earning over um, five figures, so $10,000 plus. Um, the 2022 average per month is $11,786. I'll just kind of call out the highs and lows. May was super low because this was prior to me realizing that I couldn't front load my 401k, turned my contribution rate super high. And basically I'm missing like a paycheck from that month. It was like zero dollars or like a couple cents basically. And then I realized that I needed to get my employer match and be contributing every single month to get the full match. So I quit that and I am 
have to evenly contribute every single paycheck till I max it out in December. So be sure to talk to your benefits team so you know how they match your 401k. Sometimes you need to contribute every single paycheck to get the full match. Um, and then as you can see, the front half of the year, like January through April, I was making good, 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 good money because I was freelancing. So on top of my nine to five, I was freelancing a bunch. So that is why I was really hustling. I was on the verge of burnout. It was very stressful. Do not recommend. Um, and after that, I like took it down to more of like a normal average, um, which is why I think in 2023, it'll be much more like normal throughout the entire year instead of like these crazy ups and downs. For expenses, so you can see January through March, I was really like at home with my parents. And then starting after that, I started going down to LA more to see my boyfriend and now we're moving in together. But I also was traveling a lot May through July. So those months spending was a bit higher and September, my taxes, that is why it's so high. It would probably be closer to the 3000 ish dollar range if I didn't have my taxes that I paid. So again, skewing, skewing my data. I do not like this. So if you guys have a suggestion on how I should like factor my taxes, let me know. I'm kind of confused as to what to do. Um, but you can see the average expenses um, from 2021 was $1,934 increasing it almost $1,000 per month to $3,202 in 2022. So pretty wild. And this is why my um, total spend like doubled. I'm, I'm making these sad faces, but I am trying to be conscious. Like I should not beat myself up for spending like this because I am more than capable. And I realize I, I'm in this like very privileged place of being able to afford this lifestyle. So I literally do not have to worry. So why am I beating myself up for like spending what I did when I still had a savings rate of 73%? That's insane. I like shouldn't be like, erg, Katie, why did you do that? Like just that internal dialogue with myself, I need to be extremely conscious and try to like stop it. Like realize that it's happening in the moment like I'm doing now and being like, hey, like it's okay, girl, you did amazing. So kind of switching that on its, on its head. Net worth. I'm sure everybody's excited to hear about my net worth. As you can see, it was almost like flat. Basically, in January, I started at 452,000. And now I'm at $501,743. Breaking it that down, my cash was $45,000 and 46 cents tax advantage. Um, investments were $184,178 and taxable. Um, just like regular brokerage investments were $272,519. My liabilities, which are only my credit cards, I zeroed out, paid them all off for December. So $0. My total net worth is $501,743. So I'm half a millionaire, um, which is very cool. But I feel like that is mostly like brute force putting more money into my accounts because of my paychecks and my contributions rather than the investment growth because the market has been like so wild. Um, and as you can see, I just love to look back on my yearly progress. It's so cool to start tracking your money and having all this data going as far back as 2019 when my net worth was $156,000. And you can see the years of crazy, crazy growth. In 2020, it increased by 82%. In 2021, that increased by 58%. This year, it only increased by 11%, which that is still really great. I'm not mad about that, but it was so much fun. It's obviously more fun when it's higher and the stock market is doing really well. So we'll see about 2023. I have like no expectations about it. I'm just going to keep staying the course, just investing and spending like I usually do. Um, and finally, for my fire progress, um, you can see that I am getting closer and closer with every passing year. Um, and net worth, I will say, also does not always equal fire progress. I don't own any property or anything. So this is just my liquid investments. Those are the only ones that really should count towards your fire goal, not any real estate, um, because you can't like liquid date that money and pull that out and spend it. So I will say fire number and net worth is different for most people, but right now mine is the same. So just a caveat there. But in 2023, this is the start of 2023, I am 33% to my fire goal. Um, and I have 67% left because my goal is $1.5 million. I could still reach 
financial independence sooner. Again, this is a buffer of like about $500,000 that I have allotted. The amount I currently need is probably closer to only 1 million based on my current average spending. But again, I just want to factor in a little buffer if I have kids, but I will continue pursuing um, things that generate money in financial independence. Just this is mostly towards taking a work sabbatical from my like corporate nine to five. And I think I would like to clarify that. So yeah, that is all of my 2022 numbers. I'm so excited to see where 2023 takes me. I just have such a good feeling about this year. I think it's going to be the best year yet. And I'm so excited for you to be here and be on the journey. Um, if you two are on your own journey to become financially independent or just get better with money and, and hear a story of a girl who is by all means pretty average, I will say, I don't think I'm better than anybody else. Um, I'll, I will say I'm very fortunate and blessed and lucky, I guess, um, to be born like in the family that I was and have the parents that I do who are very loving and still together, yada, yada. There are lots of factors that attribute to my success that are a bit intangible and hard to quantify, but um, tangent again. Um, but if you two are wanting to follow along on my journey, I would so appreciate it. And I hope that we can all retire early together. So um, stay tuned for more money videos coming your way in 2023. And hopefully we can all retire early together. Chat soon.